This is uh, Braze Welding and Advanced Gas Welding Practice, Chapter 9 out of the Welding uh, Principles and Practices book. Okay, we're going to start off with a little braze welding here. Okay, uh, braze welding is a process that uses a filler metal with a liquidus below or above, I'm sorry, 840 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, if the filler metal melts above 840 degrees Fahrenheit, it's a brazing process. If it melts below 840 degrees Fahrenheit, it's a soldering process, okay? But the base metal has a salt or a liquidus that is above what the filler metal is. Therefore, the base metal is never melted when you're doing brazing, okay? It's a, actually a bonding process where the brass flows out over the surface of the base metal, okay? Um, in torch brazing, the bronze filler rod supplies the weld metal and the oxyacetylene flame furnishes the heat, okay? Braze welding is, a, is particularly adaptable to the joining and repairing of such metals as cast iron, malleable iron, copper, brass, and dissimilar metals. It's also used for building up of surfaces, okay? That process is known as, as bronze surfacing, okay? Um, bronze loses its strength when heated to a temperature above 500 degrees. So you want to be careful not to use it in any application where it's going to be in temperatures above that. Okay. Braze welding has uh, certain commercial advantages. Okay. The speed of welding is increased because it, of the, 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 you don't have to melt the base metal, therefore it, it goes quicker. Lower heat input makes the whole process a little faster. Um, the welding of cast iron is simplified because the base metal is not melted and preheating is reduced or eliminated, okay? Since the work does not have to be brought up to a high temperature, expansion and contraction are kept to a minimum, okay? Uh, the bronze weld yields at the work, as the work cools at the temperature until the temperature reaches about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? and that releases the locked up stresses. Okay, malleable cast iron can be welded only by braze welding since the higher heat of fusion welding destroys the malleability, okay? The coating on galvanized iron is less affected by the low temperatures of braze welding. Okay, so that minimizes distortion in sheet metal fabrication. Uh, braze welding is a good method for joining dissimilar metals such as cast iron and steel, okay? Bronze filler rod. The melting temperature of a bronze filler rod is approximately 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. This is considerably below the melting point of such metals as steel, cast iron, aluminum, and uh, therefore makes the whole process possible. Okay. It usually contains a little less than 60% copper, 40% zinc. All right. Anytime you're, you're doing a brazing job, Flux is required, okay? The surface of the base metal contains oxides that can be removed only through the use of flux, okay? Since brazing is a bonding process, the surface of the material must be free of contamination of any kind, okay? Two methods that are in general use for applying flux. First off, there's just the dipping. You just heat the, the end of the um, brazing rod, dip it into a powdered flux. The stuff sticks to the heated rod, okay? And then it just melts off into the weld puddle, okay? The second method is it's applied in a liquid form in the acetylene stream from the torch with the use of a special unit designed for that purpose, okay? We don't have any there. I've actually never seen one of them, but I guess they are available. Okay, uh, one of the advantages to braze welding is that there's really not much edge preparation necessary on the joints because basically you're just counting on the, um, the, the bronze flowing through the joint and bonding on the back side, okay? All the surfaces should always be cleaned prior by either wire brushing or, or sanding or something like that, okay? Uh, the proper temperature is indicated when the base metal begins to glow, all right? At that point, a small amount of the rod um, can be dropped off and spread over the surface and it'll just flow out. The hotter the surface of the base metal is, the more it'll flow out sideways, okay? 
And that's actually what you're looking for. Okay, that's referred to as tinning. Okay. If the filler metal is applied before it's hot enough, okay, it just kind of balls up and sits on the surface. It doesn't actually bond to the surface. Okay. It won't flow at all. Okay, if it's applied when it's too hot, it spatters and smokes and, and, uh, and you get little balls of brass dancing around on the surface. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're not too hot when you're applying it. Okay, let's talk about uh, cast iron just a little bit here. Okay, malleable cast iron cannot be fusion welded with the oxyacetylene process. It must be braze welded. Okay, gray cast iron is an alloy of iron, carbon, and silicon. The carbon and gray cast iron may be present in two forms, in a carbon and iron solution, and is free carbon, okay, in the form of graphite. Okay, gray cast iron is the most common cast iron, and it is the most commonly brazed cast iron, okay. The best way to, to repair cast iron by far is, is by brazing it. Gray cast iron may be braze welded or fusion welded. For the most part, cast iron is welded in maintenance and repair work, okay? Uh, as far as preheating it, okay, control of expansion and contraction is very important in cast iron, and it is. The stuff will swell and shrink, and it all shrinks at different rates as far as the, the bronze that you've put in and the cast iron have different shrink rates. So if you don't preheat and postheat it and bring the temperature down really slow, it all just cracks. I mean, it'll crack every direction. Okay. Um, and the amount of, of heating necessary depends on the shape and the bulk and the size of the piece that's being welded. Small castings can be preheated with an oxyacetylene flame during the welding operation if the entire casting is heated evenly. Okay. Large castings may have to be put into a big oven or something like that, brought up to temperature. Okay, let's see, if you're going to uh, fusion weld cast iron, it requires the use of a good grade of cast iron filler rod, and they do make that stuff. <laughs> and it has to match the material being welded. Okay, if, if you're uh, doing cast iron, the flux, okay, must be properly applied. Too much flux can cause as much trouble as too little. Excessive flux becomes entrapped in the molten metal and causes blowholes and porosity, okay? So you don't want to overdo the flux. Okay, let's uh, move on to aluminum here. Okay, fusion welding of aluminum with oxyacetylene. Okay, aluminum can be welded by gas welding and many other welding processes such as TIG and MIG, okay? Characteristics of aluminum, there are three categories of aluminum. Okay, there's pure aluminum, wrought aluminum alloys, and aluminum casting alloys. Okay, pure aluminum melts at 1220 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas weldable commercial aluminum alloys have melting range of 900 degrees to 1220 degrees. Okay, compare this temperature with the steel, or with steel, which melts at about 2800 degrees Fahrenheit, and copper, which melts at about 1980 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, aluminum also does not change color during the heating, okay, like the others do. But you have to watch out. When its melting temperature is reached, it, it just collapses suddenly, okay? This is known as hot shortness, okay? Um, it does not dissipate heat well. It stays in one small area. Once the melting point is reached, you have to be very careful and bring the temperature up real slow because once you hit that melting point, the thing just, it just drops out on you, okay? Uh, let's see, aluminum weld pool oxides. The aluminum weld pool oxidizes, I'm sorry, very rapidly. It forms an oxide with a melting point of 3,700 degrees Fahrenheit, which must be removed either chemically or with the flux or mechanically with the paddle, okay? Um, as far as filler rods, as a rule, the diameter of the filler rod should equal the thickness of the metal being welded, okay? And uh, you should Try to stay in the same alloy area as far as the filler rods. There's some really good um, general alloys that work well on most everything, like 4043 is a really good one. Okay, uh, let's talk about the flux. A number of commercial fluxes are available for doing aluminum. Uh, those in powdered form 
which are mixed with are mixed with alcohol or water to make a paste, okay? Those are the most practical and the most commonly used, okay? In order to produce a clean sound weld with maximum welding speed, a neutral flame is ideal, okay? Um, though a slightly reducing flame or carburizing flame, which is a little bit high in acetylene, can be satisfactory, okay? But a neutral flame is probably the ideal one. Um, as far as the technique for aluminum welding, on aluminum butt joints up to a thickness of uh, 1 16th inch, no edge preparation is necessary, okay? Uh, flange type joint may also be used. Materials from 1 16th to 5 30 seconds of an inch can be welded in the form of a square butt joint. In other words, you don't need to bevel the edges on them. Uh, but the plate edges should be notched for aluminum plate from 3 16 to 7 16. In other words, when you get to plate that's 3 16 or thicker, then you have to start putting a bevel on it. Okay? Uh, since grease, oil, and dirt cause weld porosity and interfere with welding, they should be removed, so always make sure you clean it thoroughly. Okay? Uh, like cast iron, cast aluminum requires careful preheating before welding and slow cooling afterwards. Okay? Stuff will really crack if you don't bring the temperature down slow on, on cast aluminum. Uh, as far as positions, welding positions go, aluminum welding with gas can be done in all positions. However, it is difficult and uh, if you're, if you're going to do overhead, make sure you know what you're doing, you know. Uh, flat is obviously the preferred position as it is with most everything, but it, it can actually be done in all positions. It's just very difficult to do it vertical and overhead. Okay, um, post weld, weld cleaning, uh, small sections may be cleaned by a 10 to 15 minute immersion in a cold 10% sulfuric acid bath or a 5 to 10 minute immersion in a 5% sulfuric acid bath held at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, okay. Acid cleaning should always be followed by a hot or cold water rinse, okay. You can also steam clean it, okay, and that will remove the flux residue. And that's probably the safest way to do it. Uh, let's see, let's talk now about stainless steel. Okay, the common terms for popular types are 188, 2512, 2520, for example. In each of these, the, the first figure refers to the percentage of chromium and the second figure to the percentage of nickel. Okay, stainless steel is, is meant to be non-corrosive. Okay, so it has a lot of chromium and nickel in it. Uh, joint design and preparation are like the same for steel, okay, so if you're oxyacetylene welding steel. Uh, for welding high chromium steels, the welding tip should be one or two sizes smaller than you would use for the same thickness of carbon steel, okay. A flux is necessary because the chromium in stainless steel oxidizes rapidly, okay. It acts as a barrier between the flame and the surface of the material being welded, all right. Uh, let's see, Martin Siddig Steels, 400 and 500 series stainless um, with 12 to 18 percent chromium. They should be pro preheated locally or completely to 300 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That prevents excessive air hardening and possible cracking, all right? The uh, ferritic stainless steels are not hardenable and so let's see they should be preheated to 300 to 500 degrees especially in cold weather. The parts also should be annealed, okay? Let's see. Let's go on to copper and copper alloys now, okay? And joint design once again is the same as steel so all the same rules apply as, as you would for just oxyacetylene welding carbon steel, okay? Because of the high heat condu conductivity of copper, a tip one or two sizes larger is than that that is used for steel of the same thickness is necessary, okay? So you have to go to a little bit bigger tip. Flux is not generally required for fusion welding of copper, okay? 
A filler rod should be completely deoxidized and have a melting point slightly below that of the base metal. The quality of the completed weld can be improved by peening, then heating to a red heat and allowing it to cool slowly. Okay, copper is a high conductor of heat and has a high expansion rate. This high expansion rate when heated and the high contraction rate during cooling cause lockup stresses and distortion. Okay, these can be materially reduced by preheating, postheating, and slow cooling. Um, copper cannot be heat treated, okay. Uh, the flame adjustment should be neutral. If you're oxyacetylene welding copper, just use a neutral flame. And at no time should you touch the flame to the molten pool, okay. Copper can also be braze welded, too. Okay, nickel and nickel alloys. Nickel has a high strength and high corrosion resistance, okay. It's often used in, in pipe that will be subject, subjected to high temperatures and highly corrosive materials. Okay, joint design will be the same corresponding to the thickness of the steel. A V-groove with a 75 degree groove angle is required if you're going to do a full penetration weld on, the, on a nickel pipe or something. Okay, Inconel is an alloy of nickel, chromium, and iron and small percentages of other materials, but those are the main ones. Okay, the tensile strength of annealed inconel is higher than that of steel. Okay, and it can be oxyacetylene welded. Uh, K Monel is a wrought alloy of nickel, copper, aluminum, and titanium, and possesses the corrosion resistance that is characteristic of Monel. Okay, and it also can be oxyacetylene welded. Magnesium, okay, it's two-thirds as heavy as aluminum and less than one-quarter as heavy as steel. Okay, so really lightweight stuff. The joint design for magnesium will be similar to that for aluminum. It's a lot like welding aluminum. Not a lot of difference at all. Uh, magnesium alloys have low strength at a temperature just below the melting point. Okay. So they must be supported or the same thing will occur just like I said with the aluminum. You get that hot shortness where it reaches the melting point and all of a sudden everything just falls out. Okay. Uh, the filler metal must be of the same composition as the base metal. Okay. In other words, you have to know what, which base metal alloy you're using and use the right filler metal. Uh, a flux is used to prevent oxidation when you're doing magnesium. Okay. And a neutral flame is recommended for welding it. Um, it says never enter an oxidizing flame into it, okay? Keep it away from oil, grease, make sure it's cleaned well, okay? And basically the technique is really similar to, the, to aluminum, be the same thing. Uh, hard facing is a process of, of welding on worn metal surfaces, um, basically putting a coating on an edge, a point, or a flat surface, which is highly something that's highly re, uh, capable of resisting abrasion, corrosion, or erosion, okay, high temperature or impact, okay. You're more or less just building something up to make it corrosion resistant, impact resistant, something along those lines. That's pretty common with oxyacetylene welding. Um, the application of hard facing, in other words, building it up, okay, make sure that the surfaces are, are thoroughly cleaned, either ground or machined, filed, wire brushed, any of those, okay. Preheat the parts to be hard faced. Small parts can be preheated with a torch, larger ones might have to be put in a furnace or an oven, okay. Uh, you want to bring them up to a very dull red, approximately 800 degrees Fahrenheit, okay. Adjust the torch to an excess acetylene flame or a carburizing flame, okay. Um, this flame adjustment causes the deposit metal to spread freely, all right. Basically, you just start welding the stuff on there, just drop it on and, and coat the surface. Okay, let's see. You want to make sure after you've done this with the hard facing that you cool the, the part slowly. Okay, if you, if you let it cool too fast because of different shrink rates and things like that, um, a lot of times the stuff will crack and fall right off of there, so it has to be brought down to temperature. 
very slowly and evenly. Um, okay, it looks like that pretty much concludes everything we need to go over in chapter 9 here. Uh, make sure you read this chapter thoroughly. Good luck on the test.